There is a special place in my heart for the Super Nintendo. After all, it was the very first console I have owned and is home to the very first game I have ever played. But besides nostalgia factors, the Super Nintendo is one of Nintendo's best consoles ever created. Sure, it might look a little bit goofy by today's standard, but I mean, making a goofy looking console seems like the way to go nowadays anyways. <laughs> I'm looking at you, PlayStation 5. The Super Nintendo has games for everyone and also has tons of them. Picking only 10 games for this list was very tough for me and I know some of you will disagree with my choices, but keep in mind that I, Nico, am not the biggest fan of RPGs, so don't go into this list expecting a lot of Final Fantasy and all that stuff, or else you'll be really disappointed. Without further ado, hey, I'm Nico and here's my top 10 SNES games. The very first Mario Kart game might not be amongst the best one nowadays, but back when it was first launched, Super Mario Kart was the bomb. This game was one of the first party kart types of games. Cool tracks, epic items, a pretty decent character selection, those are all words that could be behind the box to describe this game. Get ready to race through some basic circuits, then to make your way in a plane, only to get yourself in a haunted house to end up in a castle afterwards. This is what is crazy about the Mario Kart series. Due to the limitations of the Super Nintendo, only the top portion of the screen can be used to play, but that also gives you a sweet map underneath at all times, which is pretty cool too. Super Mario Kart contains 20 different circuits and also features the now iconic battle mode, which is pretty cool, not gonna lie. During the NES era, I really was a fan of the Castlevania series. Well, the first and the third game at least, because Castlevania 2 is, well, garbage. Super Castlevania 4 brings back the series to its root on the Super Nintendo and puts you in control of Simon, as you'll make your way through 11 different levels, all containing enemies to defeat, power-ups to collect, and chickens to uncover in walls. Yeah, I wouldn't eat that if I were you, Simon. Uh, ugh. This new Castlevania allows you to attack in all 8 directions with your whip, which is something this series truly needed. For the first time ever, you truly feel in control of the character and feel like there's nothing that can stop you. Well, maybe one of those epic bosses can, because this game is full of epic fights and it truly becomes a very difficult game as you make your way through it. Get ready to die a couple of times and retry from the start if you expect to beat this game, but trust me, it is totally worth it. The very first game I owned was Super Mario World plus Super Mario All-Stars. And I have a secret to tell you guys. Back when I got this game, I was maybe like 3 or 4 years old, and I had no clue who that Mario guy was. All I knew is that he appeared in a lot of Super Nintendo games. Yeah, I actually had no clue when I was playing Super Mario All-Stars that I was playing remakes of the original Super Mario Bros. trilogy on the NES. I actually thought all of those games were brand new. And I don't blame myself, I mean, look at those games, they look fantastic. This cartridge includes remakes of Super Mario Bros, Super Mario 2, Super Mario 3, and the infamous Super Mario The Lost Levels, which is the actual Japanese Super Mario Bros 2, and this one is very tough. I don't even think I beat it as a kid. Having now played both the original NES version and the remakes, I can safely say that I actually prefer the All-Stars version. All of the original game mechanics are intact, but with a fresh coating of 16-bit graphics, which makes quite the difference in my opinion. The music is also remixed and sounds better than ever. If the rumors are true and that we are actually getting a Super Mario 64 remake on the Switch later this year, I just hope it is made with as much love and attention to details as Super Mario All-Stars was. I feel like people always forget this, but Super Mario World actually has a sequel. Take a look at that game box. <laughs> yep, Yoshi's Island is actually considered a sequel to Mario World. And it is hard to tell because Yoshi's Island is such a different game. And such a good one too. 
in this game, instead of controlling Mario, you actually control Yoshi the Dinosaur in this prequel where we must bring baby Mario back to the stork so that he and baby Luigi can be delivered to their parents safely. You'll no longer rely on jumping on Goombas and collecting power-ups to beat your enemies. As Yoshi, your biggest weapon is your mouth. So get ready to eat tons of enemies, turn them into eggs, and use those eggs to attack even more enemies. Actually, this egg throwing mechanic is so good that an entire Yoshi series was born out of it. If you want to fully complete Yoshi's Island, get ready to explore all of the levels, trying to find secret red coins, flowers, and beat them without taking damage. You're actually ranked at the end of every single stage and to unlock all of the secret levels, you need to get a perfect score everywhere. Now, this is what I call a challenge. Let's be real, I am a simple man. I see Mario, I play, no matter what. As I mentioned in the intro of this video, I'm not the biggest RPG fan. But of course, if you put Mario in an RPG, well, count me in. Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars is a phenomenal game. It takes place in the Mushroom Kingdom, but instead of jumping on enemies, you'll be fighting them in a turn-based RPG battle system. But this is also a dynamic battle system, meaning you can do more damage by timing your button presses while you attack, and you can tank more damage by defending from your enemy's attack, which is really cool. This game's story is all over the place, with you teaming up with Bowser and Princess Peach, fighting against Power Rangers looking dudes, fighting Birdo at one point for some reason, oh, and you also get to fight an alarm clock. Yeah, I told you this game was weird, but the good kind of weird. Get ready to meet some cool characters you'll fall in love with, and others you'd love to see in Smash Bros in this epic adventure. Seriously, even if you're not an RPG fan, this game is one you definitely need to play. Speaking of games you absolutely need to play, this next one is a game I slept on growing up, because I was actually too dumb to figure out what to do. Super Metroid is not your typical move from left to right type of game. It is actually a game featuring a huge map you'll need to explore if you hope to beat the game. What scared me about Metroid growing up is how confusing it was, because you always ended up on dead end or doors you couldn't open because you lacked the weapon needed to do so. Now that I am a big brain and can actually figure out simple puzzles, I can safely say this game is worth playing. Sure, from time to time you'll get stuck and you might even get mad, but I strongly suggest persevering and trying to find secret paths, because it is so rewarding when you figure out how to progress in this game. The more you play Metroid, the simpler it gets, because of all the cool weapons and powers you unlock, and the bosses are also super fun to fight. But the music, oh, the music is just phenomenal! Do yourself a favor and go play Super Metroid after watching this video if you've never played it before. It will be worth it, trust me. When I was growing up, I had this habit of replaying the same games every single summer after school was finally done. One of those games I played every single year was Mega Man X. If you're familiar with the NES Mega Man series, then you'll feel right at home playing Mega Man X, as it's pretty much the same game, but just set in a dystopian world full of robots and evil beings. The rules are simple. You pick a stage, you play through it trying to find hidden power-ups and health tanks, only to fight a boss at the end, and upon defeating said boss, you get its weapon and can use it to defeat more bosses. One of the novelties of the Mega Man X series is the ability to slide and also to climb on walls, which makes vertical levels possible, which was a thing that was not as fun to do in the original Mega Man series. Oh, and this game also contains the coolest character you don't get to play as, Zero. This dude is red, with long hair and an epic laser sword, dang. Too bad we'll have to wait until Mega Man X3 to play as him. 
you just cannot go wrong with The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. It's one of the best games ever made, period. It features amazing controls, beautiful graphics, amazing dungeon designs, scary bosses, tons of secrets to uncover, and you can also turn into a bunny! What more do you need? Seriously though, this game was such a step up when you compare it to the NES one. It contains like a hundred times more things to do. Oh, and there's tons of dungeons to explore too, all very different from one another. And now that there are different floors to explore as well, get ready to check out your map as you'll probably get lost in such big dungeons. The weapon selection is also pretty neat, featuring now iconic weapons such as the bow and arrow, hookshot and bombs. There are some games that you just wish you could forget and experience all over again one more time, and for me, A Link to the Past is one of these. My grandma had a Super Nintendo when I was a kid, and when we would go visit her, I would instantly go play the only game she owned, Donkey Kong Country. First off, let's talk about those graphics. How do they look so good? Most of the games on the SNES look like drawings, but this game looked like a freaking animation movie. I mean, it looks like Toy Story on my Super Nintendo. Insane. The controls were also perfect. The levels were also fun to play. The buses were cool to fight. What more do you need? A sequel? Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest is insane. It took everything that made the original game fun, but improved on it by adding secret bonuses where you'd get coins you could use to buy stuff and discover a secret world. It also added the ability to throw your Kong partner to reach previously unreachable areas and the whole setting is set in the enemy's base, so everything is scary and dangerous. What more do you need? ANOTHER SEQUEL?! Okay, well to be fair, I have to put the entire Donkey Kong series here at number 2, because choosing amongst all three games is just impossible. They all have their ups and downs, but since they're all so similar in a way, I suggest you play them all. Do not limit yourself to one, just get them all. It's worth it. So, obviously, my number one pick is Super Mario World. It is the very first game I have ever played in my life, and I grew up playing it over and over again. So, of course, it is also my favorite game of all time. But, objectively speaking, it is also one of the best games ever created, as it improved so much on the previous Super Mario Bros. 3 game. It introduced new power-ups, features a huge map that's all connected, allowing you to find secret paths, and backtrack to get more lives and power-ups if you needed to. Plus, all of the worlds are so different from one another. One minute you're in a cave, the next in a forest, and then in a world made out of chocolate. I mean, who comes up with that stuff? And the inclusion of my boy Yoshi truly made this game way more enjoyable, allowing you to eat up enemies, switches, and even more. There is no need to discuss it further, everybody is familiar with Super Mario World, and if you're not, well please, I beg you, please play it. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Only one week left to get your very own The Rules Are Simple merch, so make sure to tap the cards on screen for that. If you already have pre-ordered yours, well, why don't you check out Super Nico Maker, my brand new channel where I play Mario Maker levels every single day. It's pretty cool, you'll like it, I'm sure. Anyways guys, tap the cards on screen and I'll see you in the next one.